Water is the most precious resource on Earth, and about 71% of the Earth's surface is covered in water. And more than 97% of the total volume of H2O on Earth is salt water, stuck in the oceans and seas that surround us. Of the 2.5% of fresh water on Earth, more than two-thirds of that is stuck in the ice caps and glaciers, and about 30% is groundwater. In other words, a shockingly small amount of Earth's fresh water is found in rivers and lakes. As the Earth's climate patterns are thrown into more and more chaos, certain regions of the world are experiencing more drought. The Paraná River, one of the main commercial waterways in South America, is drying up and reaching its lowest level in 77 years. It's due to a prolonged drought in Brazil, and experts are blaming the extreme weather patterns on global warming. The unpredictability of weather patterns is changing national and international behavior as nations jockey for greater water security. This is where dams come in. A dam is a structure that holds back the flow of water. Dams are used to prevent flooding and to collect water for human use, whether it's for human consumption, for irrigation, or for other human applications. Many dams are also used to generate hydroelectric power. When the water is released downstream through the dam, it spins turbines that generate electricity. China currently leads the world in total hydroelectric power produced, followed by Brazil and Canada. In this video, we'll take a trip around the globe to the 10 biggest dams in the world today. There are a few different ways to measure a dam. One way is by the total amount of power they generate, another way is by the height of a dam or its width, or by the total structural displacement. I'm not using any of those methods. We are going to look at the world's biggest dams by the size of their reservoir, if they were completely full. The maximum water storage behind the dam. Let's get started. Coming in at number 10 is the Zaya Dam in Russia. Completed in 1978, this dam lies about 135 kilometers from the border of China's Heilongjiang province. It's not a very large dam. At about 115 meters high and 1,284 meters tall, but it holds back an incredible amount of water. The Zaya Dam sits on the Zaya River, blocking off the mighty Zaya Reservoir, which expands greatly about 40 kilometers north of the dam. Compared to Lake Geneva's 89 cubic kilometers of water, the Zaya Reservoir contains about 77% as much water. We don't have to leave Russia to reach number 9 on our list. 2,235 kilometers away lies the Krasnoyarsk Dam on the Yenisei River. The Krasnoyarsk Reservoir contains a little over 73 cubic kilometers of water. It was completed in 1972, and it's so important that it's even found its way onto the currency. The dam has an installed capacity of 6,000 megawatts, which means that it could generate enough power to run New York City for about half the day, if it were running non-stop at its theoretical maximum capacity. Number 8 on our list is the W.A.C. Bennett Dam in Canada. The Bennett Dam was completed in 1968, and it's more than 2 kilometers long. Today, hydroelectricity accounts for a little more than 25% of Canada's total energy production. Behind it, Williston Lake is held back. At 74.3 cubic kilometers, the Williston Lake is a tiny bit larger than the Krasnoyarsk Reservoir, but its installed capacity is just over 2,700 megawatts, less than half of the Krasnoyarsk Dam. 
Number seven on our list is the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. Less than 15 kilometers from the border of Sudan, this dam was completed in 2020. It sits on the Blue Nile, one of the two main tributaries of the iconic Nile River. The reservoir has not been totally filled yet, and Ethiopia's quick filling of the reservoir has prompted controversy and threats from Egypt downstream. I made a video about that last year, so check out my channel if you're interested in that. The estimated size of the reservoir, if full, would be between 74 and 79 cubic kilometers, making it comparable to the Bennett Dam. Let's freeze the image here so you can take a look at this. Evidently, Google Earth has not updated all of their satellite images. The right side appears to be from 2020 or earlier, before Ethiopia started to fill the dam, and the left side from sometime in 2021. Here you can compare the images from November 2020 with ones 10 months later in September 2021. If you're watching this video in 2022 or beyond, it might be interesting to go on Google Earth and check out what it looks like today. Okay, now here we are in Google Earth Pro. This is a totally free software made by Google. I've put a link to it in the description for this video. And we're going to take a look at the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam throughout time. So if, uh, here we are in Bameza, if you go up to the tab, hit view, and then click on historical imagery, we're going to see a little timeline pop up in the upper left, a little slider throughout time. Now we're here in uh, 2021, but if we drag that uh, all the way down, or just click on 1985, uh, it's a little foggy there, let's zoom out. Uh, you can take a look at what the site looked like before the dam was there. There's the border with Ethiopia and Sudan. Uh, let's skip forward a little bit, 2001. You can see they still have not started to build the dam. Let's jump up to 2012, a little bit more activity. 2015, 2016, 2017, 2019, and all the way uh, to December 2020. They had not started filling the dam yet. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is the most controversial dam in the world right now, and it has an installed capacity of 6,000 megawatts, the same as the Krasnoyarsk Dam in Russia. Not far from this dam, at number 6, we have the giant Aswan High Dam on the Nile River. Despite its name, the Aswan High Dam is actually the dam on our list with the shortest height at 111 meters high. The Aswan High Dam was built partially to control the Nile's heavy annual flooding every summer and to provide a steady stream of electricity and water to Egypt's 105 million people. Lake Nasser is a gigantic reservoir holding about 132 cubic kilometers at max capacity. That's about one and a half Lake Geneva's. Because Ethiopia is filling up its dam quickly, Egypt's water supply has been slowing down. More than 95% of Egypt's population lives within a few kilometers of the river or the Nile Delta, so the importance of this dam cannot be overstated. Number 5 on our list is our only dam in South America. In Venezuela, the Guri Dam was once the dam with the highest installed capacity on Earth, 10,235 megawatts. Today, it is the fifth largest hydropower station on Earth, but various problems have prevented it from coming close to the electricity it once generated. At one time, the Guri Dam supplied more than one-third of Venezuela's total energy. This dam is also the only dam on our list to make it into the world's top 10 largest hydropower stations list. With an astounding total length of 7,426 meters, a little over 4.6 miles, 
the Guri Dam is by far the longest dam on our list. The Guri Reservoir, also called the Guri Lake, sits behind the dam. On the other side lies the Caroni River. Coming in at number four on our list is the Daniel Johnson Dam in Quebec, Canada. Interestingly, the man for whom the dam was named died on the very day he was supposed to commemorate its completion in 1968. Behind this dam is the curiously shaped Manicouagan Reservoir, inside of which sits René Levasseur Island. As it happens, René Levasseur was the chief engineer for the dam, and he died seven weeks before the dam was opened. The annular lake is Earth's sixth largest impact crater lake, formed from the collision of a meteor 214 million years ago in the early age of the dinosaurs. The reservoir, or lake if you prefer, contains almost 140 cubic kilometers of water. It's a really cool geographic feature when seen from satellite imaging. The island itself is the world's largest man-made island, created in 1970 when the Daniel Johnson Dam flooded two crescent-shaped lakes and joined them together. No people officially live on the island, you can't buy land there, and there have been talks about turning it into a national park or a protected environmental reserve. At number three on our list in southeast Ghana is the Akosombo Dam. South of the dam is the Volta River, and sprawling for hundreds of kilometers northward lies the enormous Lake Volta, the largest reservoir in the world by surface area. The Akosombo Dam was completed in 1965 and has an installed capacity of just over 1,000 megawatts, enough to power New York City for about two hours a day if it were running at full strength. Like some of the other dams, this one is important enough to make its way onto the currency of its host country. Number two on our list is our last dam in Russia, the Bratsk Dam. It has an installed capacity of about 4,500 megawatts. The Bratsk Dam was completed in 1966 and was the largest producing hydropower station for five years until the Krasnoyarsk Dam overtook it. It sits almost 600 kilometers to the east of the Krasnoyarsk Dam on the Angara River. The Angara River begins from nearby Lake Baikal, the deepest lake on planet Earth and also the oldest and the largest freshwater lake by volume. If you look closely enough at the Bratsk Dam, you can see that it even has a railroad track built on top of it. Before we get to number one on our list of the 10 biggest dams, let's take a look at some honorable mentions. The Jinping E Dam in China is currently the world's tallest dam at 305 meters. This gigantic arch dam sits on the Yalong River in Sichuan province. In East Africa, Lake Victoria is the world's largest reservoir by surface area. It flows into the White Nile through Uganda's Nalubale Dam, formerly known as the Owens Falls Dam. It only has an installed capacity of 180 megawatts, which, if operated at its maximum potential for 24 hours, could power New York City for about 20 minutes. Our last honorable mention is China's epic Three Gorges Dam on the Yangtze River. It took 18 years to complete and finally opened in 2012. This power station has by far the greatest installed capacity of any dam on Earth at 22,500 megawatts. That's enough to power two New York cities if it were running at full capacity nonstop. 
In actuality though, the dam produces a little less than half that electricity. The mighty Three Gorges Dam has a capacity factor of 45%. No dam on Earth has the ability to meet its stated installed capacity. The Hoover Dam in Arizona has a capacity factor of just 23%. Enough stalling. At first place on our list of the world's biggest dams by reservoir volume is the Kariba Dam on the Zambezi River. The Kariba Dam is shared by Zambia and Zimbabwe, and each country has its own power station. Currently, Zimbabwe's side generates little more power than Zambia's. Lake Kariba, which is the world's largest man-made reservoir by volume, is about 180 cubic kilometers large, making it twice the size of Lake Geneva. A better comparison might be Kenya's Lake Turkana, which has a volume of almost 204 cubic kilometers. Earth currently has 25 natural lakes larger than Lake Kariba, with Turkana at number 25. The Kariba Dam is also the oldest dam on our list, completed in 1959. It's also the shortest dam in length of the 10 on our list at just 579 meters long. Nations now have to decide how much water they want to let pass through their dams for electricity, as well as how much they want to provide to their growing populations. Introducing greater unpredictability into an already complex, fragile equation will result in more international conflicts. Egypt is threatening Ethiopia with open war, while India, Pakistan, and China are drifting towards conflict. Russia is interested in exploiting Ukraine's rivers, while Central Asian nations clash for access to fresh waters. On a drying, dying planet, water means life. It always has.